So this is it. We finally here at the top and I actually had to increase this to 10 games. That's right, 10 games. There's no way in the world I can make this a top five list or a top seven, top eight, top nine. We had to go top 10. I was even gonna go higher than this and go top 15 games of 2023. But then I lost my ambition and we went down to top 10. So here we go, top 10 games of 2023. Don't forget, like, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. Number 10, it's Choo Choo Charles. An indie horror game about an evil spider train hybrid monster that is looking for people to eat. You play as a monster hunter tasked in defeating this goddamn thing, and you do that by upgrading your train. I didn't expect a game about a killer monster train to be on my list, but here it is. Now, it's not the greatest looking game as the character models look a little horrible, and a lot of it is just a survival game of finding items and making sure Charles doesn't eat your ass, but it's a pretty good game and it does deserve some recognition. At number nine, it's Ghost Runner 2. God, this game, this game is frustrating me. As someone who never played the first Ghost Runner, I had no idea what I was walking into, but I fully gave this a shot. Lo and behold, it's a fun hack and slash first person game, but it's hard. Boy, is it hard. Either that or I just suck that much. But honestly, I like the style, I like the combat, and I like the whole idea. It's hard, sure, but it's also really rewarding. At number eight, it's Tower of Fantasy, a free RPG and one actually one of those games that could have made my top five RPGs of 2023. But I decided to put it on here, and what's to say about this game? I like the anime style, combat is a little more hack and slash than turn based. And I don't know why, I really don't know why, but this reminds me so much of Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse and Dragon Quest. I don't know why, but that's the vibe I'm getting with this game. With games like Genshin Impact coming out on console and becoming great hits, it was only a matter of time that we got another one like that. At number seven, Robocop. This was a game that did the licensing proud. It actually felt like you were Robocop. You had that awesome hand cannon with unlimited ammo and just blowing bad guys away with it was fun. Boy, was it ever, ever fun. It helps too that they got the original Robocop in Peter Weller and it sort of ties into the second movie and the third movie. This is kind of in between. Now there's some minor issues here and there, but if you're a Robocop fan, you gotta play this game. It's fun and it's violent. Very, very violent and bloody. Boy, is it bloody. At number six, it's Game Deck. Talk about an interesting choice for a game. I kind of stumbled across this, and what a unique twist this is. You play as a custom-made character, and you are a detective where you solve crimes, get this, in virtual reality games. That alone is a pretty awesome idea, and boy, is it ever enjoyable different decisions and dialogue options, as well as being able to play how you want, is a great concept and executed perfectly here. At number five, it's Spider-Man 2. Great game, no doubt. You play as both Peter Parker and Miles Morales with some new villains, a new story. But anyone else feel like this is more like DLC? The game is pretty much the same as Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man Miles Morales. And don't get me wrong, love those two games. But I just felt like I spent 50 bucks on a game that could easily have been a huge DLC for the first game. Still, as much as I harp on it, Spider-Man 2 is a great game. Love the characters, love the combat, love the story, and of course, Venom. It's always nice to see Venom, and we finally get him in a video game, a Spider-Man video game, sorry. It has been way too long. At number four, it's Hanukkah Star Rail. Yes, another free RPG, this one developed by Miho, who also developed Genshin Impact. So you know this is going to be good. The game is about the main character traveling across worlds and resolving disasters. This one is more turn-based, where you build up a lineup of characters and control the team rather than an action RPG, where you're going around hacking and slashing enemies. 
This was a game I was waiting to play. I saw it on advertisements. I saw ads for it on YouTube, on TV. I was waiting for this and I've enjoyed it so far. Maybe not as much as I thought I was because other games had come out, but I'm looking forward to playing more of this in 2024. And number three, it's Alan Wake 2. Now this is ironic because I never got into the first Alan Wake game. So I'm putting now the second game as number three for game of the year. Now this all started because of that song, Herald of Darkness that I heard at the Video Game Awards. And I suddenly got very interested in the story and in the characters. Honestly, now I'm a fan. And this is one of those games that I just love to play. Yes, it's freaky, and yeah, I should be playing the first game first, but I just can't put this one down. The story's interesting, the characters are interesting. I love the combat. I love the whole thing about Alan Wake 2. I don't really want to play Alan Wake 1. I'd rather just stick with Alan Wake 2. At number two, it's Hogwarts Legacy, and this kind of blows my mind a little bit because I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I may have watched two or three of the movies, but I never read the books. I don't know much about lore. I was never interested in the stories. So surprise, surprise, I got interested in Hogwarts Legacy. This is a game I had no interest in, and yet it's one of my favorites for the entire year. I'm not the biggest wizard and witch fan, but this type of combat is actually fun that I might try playing wizards and witches in other games. Also, this entire world is just interesting and looks great to explore. I can fully understand why this game was so popular and sold so many copies. And as for me, I'm kind of just walking in blind here because again, not a Harry Potter fan, know nothing about this. So playing this is kind of a new experience for me. And number one, was there any doubt? Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not going to say much since I have talked about this game pretty much to death, but this was the game I played the most this year about 200 250 hours or so now i've gone to other games to try them out and play them and i always seem to come back to baldur's gate 3. whether it's to try new paths new classes new romance options or just anything else new i've been playing this game continuously and i haven't been able to stop it's this is why this is the game of the year for me even now i am still thinking about playing this game and trying the jack of all trades where you pretty much put one, you, you level up, you multi-class for one level each. I'm still thinking about this game. 200, 250 hours, and I haven't stopped. Thanks everyone. Don't forget, like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know some of your favorite games down in the comments below. Stay tuned for next week as we look at my top five games that are coming for 2024. Till then, take care, God bless, and I'll see you next time.